Hello, my name is Ilona and I will continue with Geography Now reactions and today it will be Croatia, okay. Yes, Game of Thrones was filmed here. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. We are back in Europe and today we are going to discuss 101 Dalmatian Islands. Ha! Actually, it's more like 580. But first... The flag of Croatia is a little bit more fun and jubilant than most flags because it has the iconic checker pattern in the center. First of all, the flag is a horizontal tricolor that utilizes mm -hmm. the pan-Slavic colors of red, white, and blue mm -hmm. in equally sized mm -hmm. stripes. The blue stands for freedom and hope, the white stands for peace and unity, and the red stands for et, the revolution and sacrifices. In the middle mm -hmm. is the coat of arms with the iconic Shahovnica or the checkerboard shield pattern with red and white squares, sometimes referred to as the Czechi. Some will say that this is because long ago there were like two Croatians one was called Red Croatia, one was called White Croatia, with little evidence supporting that theory. There are five shields on top of the Czechi that form a crown above the Shahovnica, each one representing the historical regions of Croatia. The first one is for Croatia proper, with a crescent and a six-pointed star, Dubrovnik with two red stripes on a dark blue shield, Dalmatia with three crown leopard heads, Illustria with a golden goat with red hooves because, hey, why not? And finally, Slavonia with a six-pointed star, two silver stripes, and a pine marten running on a red field between the Silver stripes. Yeah, for such a small country, those five regions have had an impactful historical upbringing. Let's discuss more about that. Mm -hmm. First off, before we jump in, you might hear a lot of other countries, specifically in the Slavic world, using the word Hrvatska, referring to this country instead of Croatia. To mm -hmm. a lesser extent, it's kind of like the whole thing with Germany. Visa in Deutschland. Oh, you mean Germany? Aleman? It's uh, in Latvia and Croatia. First off, Croatia is located on the western part of the Balkan Peninsula in southern Europe, bordered by Slovenia, Hungary, Serbia, hugging Bosnia and Herzegovina, giving them a small coast on the town of Neum, and just barely have a 10 mile or 16 kilometer wide border with Montenegro at the southernmost tip of the country on the Adriatic Sea. The country is divided into 20 counties, and the country's capital is Zagreb. Fun side note the small Bosnian and Herzegovinian port of Neum splits the country's Dalmatian coast, technically creating an exclave for the Dubrovnik Neretva area. Area. They were thinking of building a bridge on the Pelishats Peninsula so the entire country would be navigable by road, but plans were cancelled in 2012. Speaking of which, historically, Croatia was divided into four general regions. You'll probably hear a lot about these if you go to Croatia. They are Croatia proper, Istria, Slavonia, and Dalmatia. Speaking of which, Dalmatian dogs are said to have origins in Dalmatia, hence Dalmatian. Okay, no more rabbit trails. We really need to get back on top. Now, of course, because of its complicated past that we really don't have a lot of time to discuss, Croatia has quite a few land and sea disputes, as well as enclaves and enclaves. Of I'm just going to list some of the most notable ones. The Bay of Piran, Who the Dragona River, the Sveta Gera, all that mess on the Mura and Drava all Rivers. Then we get to Serbia and it looks like dying. earphones that were just pulled out of your pocket. The funny thing is, nobody really pays much attention to these places, which is why when outsiders do, funny things happen. Back in 2015, a Czech guy came in and self-proclaimed his own micronation called Liberland on the supposedly unclaimed island in the Danube. He was totally arrested. But he wasn't why? the only one. Two other guys tried unsuccessfully <laughs> to attempt the same thing on separate islands and failed. The country has over over a thousand islands on the Adriatic coast, even though only about 50 of them are inhabited, the largest mm. ones being Kres and Kirk, which even though Croatia ranks around 125 in country landmass, it's all the way up to spot 20 in coastline length. That's more than Sweden and South Africa combined. In your face, Mongolia! By the way, homework assignment, see if you can like find a heart-shaped island off of Croatia's coast. Mm. Zagreb may be the capital, but people come here to see Pula, Zadar, Split, and Dubrovnik. Wow. The Croatian coast is acclaimed by many to be by far one of the most captivating places in the entire world to visit, especially to witness a sunset. Oh yeah, and Zadar has a strange thing called a sea organ that looks and sounds like this. Yes. This is really something okay, let's interesting. Let's talk about plants and animals and stuff now, shall we? Okay. Okay, so Croatia may be primarily known for its coast, however, that doesn't mean that there aren't any notable features inland. Although a lot of the land outside of urban centers is used for farming, Croatia still retains some world-renowned nature zones and national parks. First of all, the country is kind of split along the Dinaric Alps mm -hmm. that meander diagonally across the northwest regions, all the way to the south along the border of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The division kind of encapsulates the inner flatter areas that slope down into the Pannonian Basin where all the rivers like the mighty Danube flow. Because of this division, Croatia experiences quite a contrasting climate even though 
the country takes up a small area. Mm. Zagreb can be completely different from Dubrovnik at any given time. About mm. half of the entire country is made up of karst topography, which is basically another word for dissolved, cavey, limestoney ground that erodes into fascinating shapes and providing a network of sub. Basically, cavey area. Just like we studied in Bulgaria, Croatia is loaded with caves. It's not that hard to find them, and many of them are absolutely breathtaking. Mm. Caves like the Blue Grotto on Bishevo Island and the incredibly deep mm. Velebit Caves that go down nearly 1,400 meters. Ah, uh, that's cute. The one place that everyone in Croatia will proudly boast over will be the famous Plitvici National Park, which contains the Plitvici waterfalls and lakes, which is where the coolest music duo on the planet, Stephen Hauser and Luka Šulić, filmed their Mumford & Sons cover video. I can't believe I missed you guys like a month ago when you came into my town and did a concert. Urgh! Sorry, I love two cellos. They're a great band. What? I can like music. Croatia also has that small Georgievetsky desert and a wide range of wildlife such as bats, otters, elk, mm. boar, martens, wolves, and that incredibly rare Eurasian lynx, the largest land cat in Europe that can be found here as well. The coast, though, once again, takes the center stage when it comes to Croatia's spotlight moment. Because of its islands and coast, Croatia has had a huge boost in tourism in the past two decades, an industry that outsiders didn't exactly have access to prior for the longest time, and the reason why will be discussed in... Croatia has a really, really long history on who it is and how it got to where it is now. And I'm just going to summarize it in like eight seconds. Roman Empire, Kingdom, Subordinate, Empire State, Wars with Turkey, Yugoslavia 1, Nazi Puppet, Yugoslavia 2, Civil War, and finally, European Union member. See, that wasn't so hard. You forgot the Illyrians! First of all, the country has about 4.5 million people and is actually one of the 30 or so countries experiencing a population decline. The country is made up almost entirely of ethnic Croats, around 91%. Serbs make up about 5% and the rest is a slew of other people groups, mostly Slavic, but toss in a few Italians, Jews, and why not some Chinese, and hey, you got Croatia. Now, like mentioned in the Bosnia and Herzegovina episode, pretty much everybody in the Slavic Balkan nations can understand each other, especially these four countries. The only mm. difference is that these two write in the Cyrillic alphabet and these two write in the Latin alphabet. Mm. It's a little more difficult for these four countries to understand the remaining Baltic states, like Slovenes and Bulgarians what and Macedonians. What do you mean? And, I mean, the former Yugoslav Republic. <laughs> Just call them Macedonians. I don't care like, why you are. Why you are Bulgarian? I'm not even part of you. I haven't been part of you. You guys can. Back to my episode? Shut, Shut up, Croatia! Croatia! Nonetheless, the funny thing is pretty much all Slavs, whether they're from Russia, Poland, or the Czech Republic, which by the way just changed its English name to Czechia, or the Balkan Slavs, can all pretty much hold a basic simple conversation with each other and get by if they speak really slow and articulate well. It would be like if a Jamaican guy tried to speak to a Singlish speaking guy. Behind mm. the statue of the coffee shop with the boom boom? No, I say it's on the right side oh, of the statue. Dude, the statue, I'm gonna look behind. I'm gonna look all right, man. I'm gonna look behind. How am I gonna know what you said? Boy, you said behind. Alama, no la. You know this is right, this is left. You very simple one. They're right. I... Okay, they're right. Okay. All you had to say is they're right, not behind. Clear now. Yeah la, clear like, already la. Alama, give right. you simple instruction also don't know. Because you are clear now. Okay la, win already la. Guys, that was Kevin and Layton. Give him a round of applause. Another quick way you can tell the Slavic Balkan states apart is the denomination. Mm -hmm. Croats and yeah, Slovenes Balkan are predominantly states, Catholic, yeah. while Serbs and Montenegrins are typically Orthodox. Croatians love water polo and don't even get started on the whole Nikola Tesla. Mm -hmm. He was a Serb. But he was born here. But he was a Serb. But he was born here. <laughs> Essentially, Croatia went from the fall of Yugoslavia and socialism in the 90s and the civil war in the mid-90s to being labeled as the top travel destination by Lonely Planet in 2000-something. I think it was like 2005. Dude, Paul, seriously, we gotta check our sources. You're making us look bad. Shut up, Brandon. I'm doing my best. Let's talk about Croatia's friends. In order to understand Croatia's friends, you're gonna have to look at two things, business and religion. First of all, they're neighbors. When it comes to Serbia and Croatia, it's kind of like... <laughs> 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 Croatia and Serbia have a lot of historical beef, but they hate to kind of admit that they secretly are kind of a little bit totally attracted and hot for each other. Business and diplomacy is still very big between these two, and ultimately they still cooperate pretty well. I was told that typically they even give each other a lot of points in Eurovision or something like that. Uh, that just proves it. Eurovision proves everything. Slovenia yeah. is like a good friend that still held a few grudges since Slovenia was the first to join the EU, and they originally vouched for Croatia, but then they were like, wait, before you get in, we gotta settle some disputes, otherwise 
I'm blocking you. And they did. And then it got messy. And then it got fixed. The end. By default, Croatia has an affinity for Catholic-dominated countries like Italy, Spain, and Ireland, especially the Irish, since they kind of empathize with the whole struggle with the UK. And they are totally fangirls of the Vatican. When it comes to their best friends, however, they would probably say Germany and Poland. Germany is a really close friend since they are kind of seen as like the promised land after so many Croatians moved in and made fortunes there. Mm. Germans also love visiting and doing business. Without a doubt though, Croatians love it when the Polish stop by. They're like the best friend who lives far away but Skypes every week and sees them twice a year. On top of that, Pope John Paul II was from Poland mm. who liked Croatia so much that he visited three times. In conclusion, Croatia is kind of like the surfer cousin of the Slavic countries. After all the drama subsided, he opened up a hotel and a tiki bar on the beach, got a tan and was all like, what's up world? Come take a vacation in Croatia. Stay tuned. Yes, I think this is probably. Of course, it de it depends. But for for me personally, I think it could be one of the most beautiful countries in Europe, at least. But well, yes, all countries are beautiful. Every country have something. But. Yeah, but still, <laughs> beautiful nature, all these towns or cities with all these buildings and beaches and everything and islands, yeah, I think this is something, yeah, so, so I hope maybe one day. Okay, oh, well, maybe that's it, and thanks for watching and goodbye.